Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Saurabh Dixit. Welcome to my channel and as per promise, I have bought one more video for you. And uh, this is again a very important short topic. So I hope you must have heard of malabsorption. And there is one more important cause of malabsorption that we are going to highlight today. So before that, the question of the day. So you can see this is the treatment for that procedure. Uh, this is the procedure then for that condition. And you can see the bowel is getting divided and we are doing some lengthening. So we are trying to increase something. So what is this procedure? Comment on the indications, comment on the other alternatives for this. And you can comment, you can type your answer in the comment section below. So let us start with the discussion. Yes, this condition today we are going to talk about. We, we shall come back again to this condition. And the first thing that I am going to talk about is what is this? So this is what is known as short bowel syndrome. So today's discussion is on short bowel syndrome. So when we talk about short bowel syndrome, short bowel syndrome, some books also write it as short gut syndrome or small gut syndrome also. That is same thing, same thing. There are a lot of people who teach a lot of things that gut length less than this centimeters, ileal length less than this centimeter, jejunal length less than this. Students, let me tell you, we cannot precisely calibrate what length will cause what. So this is a human body. We have to understand a symptom complex and how it is being generated. So what I feel that the criteria of this short bowel syndrome is not taught well enough to understand it proper to understand uh, the concept. The, the main thing that you have to understand is what is small bowel syndrome or short bowel syndrome is any length of any length of intestine. So any length of intestine that is small intestine usually usually less than 200 centimeters usually. So small intestinal length less than 200 centimeter or any length or any length of uh, small intestine associated with associated with malabsorption. So if there is malabsorption at a length less than 200 centimeter or any length if it is associated with malabsorption that is what is the classical criteria for short bowel syndrome resulting in chronic weight loss and all those things. So do you know what are the associations? It is very important for us to understand the associations of short bowel syndrome. Now associations of the short bowel syndrome, it could be a different cause symptom complex in a different cause or etiology in adults or in kids it will be different. So what are the causes that we see in kids or you can say children? versus adults. So in adults, we have one very important thing is that is tuberculosis, TB. We have Crohn's. So Crohn's, tuberculosis. What else? We have all those, uh, you can say acute mesenteric ischemia. Acute mesenteric ischemia. Yeah. You can have it due to malignancy. You can have it due to malignancy. Malignancy. So these are the conditions, these are the conditions where actually you require a massive gut resection or the gut becomes defunct and there is malabsorption because of that. When you talk about kids, one very important thing that is seen in neonates is necrotizing, necrotizing enterocolitis. You must have heard of neck. So netro, uh, necrotizing entro colitis this is one and then the second is intestinal atresias so we have intestinal atresias in necrotizing enterocolitis as a very common cause for these now let us try to understand what are the reasons or what are why this malabsorption happens so the reason for this short bowel syndrome there could be one very important thing that ileal resection so when there is ileal resection, the ileal resection leads to a less than 200 centimeter length of bowel. This is one reason. Students, there could be a possibility when the bowel length is absolutely normal. There is no problem with the bowel length. But the problem is defunct ileal cecal junction. So defunct IC junction. The second very important thing that you have to understand that if IC junction is not working properly, in that case also, 
the assimilation process is disrupted. The third is even diseased colon, diseased colon. So diseased ileum, diseased colon and one is idiopathic which no one can comment why. So there are lot of important reasons for this. Now let us try to understand the management of short bowel syndrome. So I usually choose topics which are very small and we can simply try to understand that topic in 5 to 10 minutes. So when we are talking, when we are looking into the management part, many of us, many of us think that surgical management should be the first line management. No, it is not. So the first line management, the first line management is always, always, always conservative management. Now, what is the concept of this conservative management? It is very important for you to understand. Do you know this conservative management is based on one property of the intestine. This is known as adaptive compensation. So intestine shows adaptive compensation. What do you mean by intestine shows adaptive compensation? So today you have a shorter length of intestine left over. Suppose it is less than 200 centimeters or 200 whatever you say, whatever length is there. So over the time the body will always react to this scenario and will try to increase the efficiency of the same gut. So this is what is known as adaptive compensation of the bowel and because of this property of adaptive compensation of bowel the intestines will mature over the time and the decreased length will increase the efficacy so that they reach to the pre-disease level. This is what is very 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 simple and that is why. But in that phase there will be some time requirement also. No? It's, it's not overnight that the bowel will adjust. It will take months. In certain cases, it might take years also. So for that phase, who will take care of this malabsorption? So first thing is you need to take care of the nutrition. Now when you talk about the nutrition, parenteral nutrition is the mainstay here. So why we go for parenteral nutrition? This is very important. That parenteral nutrition is given via elemental in an elemental form via IV root. So it is not going into the bowel so there is no problem of absorption or assimilation. So parenteral nutrition this is one thing. The second thing that you need to understand slowly and slowly along with this parenteral nutrition you have to do the gut priming. So you will be doing gut priming and in that case you have to understand a lot of factors are there. So this is intestine. In order to increase the efficacy of intestine, you will have to do certain certain measures. You will have to take certain measures. So this is the food which is present here. But do you know that food is assimilated by the intestinal juices? Now, if you see the length of the intestine has been reduced. And if we talk about the stomach, stomach is also giving acid. So if the acid enters into the intestine, some part of the intestinal juice is also neutralized. And since the bowel is short, this effect becomes predominant. And that is why students, we need to give PPIs. So what is the reason for PPIs? Because PPIs will decrease the acid load. And when it decreases the acid load, therefore it maximizes the potential of the what? intestinal juices and this is what is very 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 important we all know that intestinal juices are active in alkaline medium the third thing the third thing okay so one thing is this third is we can use uh, we can decrease the time of transit uh, uh, we can increase the time of transit of the food in the bowel so suppose if the bowel length is reduced but if we anyhow increase the duration for which the food is staying in the small intestine again students we can get more interaction of the intestine with the food and that is why we have anti-motility agents so when we talk about anti-motility agents agents we have a very important agent known as loperamide so chloride channel blocker loperamide this is what is very it decreases the motility the fourth is the fourth is you can say neuro you can say neuropeptide analogs so one very important thing is incretins bombesins so what are these neuropeptides doing so these neuro analogs they are the natural breaks of duodenum and jejunum so we have synthetic synthetic neuropeptides neuropeptides and one very important agent that we have here is teduglutide so when you talk about teduglutide it is a natural break of the intestine and that is how the interaction between the food and the bowel 
the time duration is enhanced and that is how the things are actually working so over the time this will help you but students for the patients where the conservative management actually fails so there you will have to go for intervention so when we talk about the intervention what are the things that we need to understand so if the medical management fails then we plan intervention and students when we are planning for intervention one very 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 important thing is that either we can do a transplant surgery so either you can do a transplant and what transplant intestinal transplant however this is not that feasible it's not like we don't do but it's not that feasible one second option is non transplant surgeries now when we talk about non transplant surgeries what are they or non transplant interventions there are two category either you do something where you can increase the length of the intestine so here the first is lengthening procedures the first is lengthening procedures this is one very important thing lengthening procedures now here i'll discuss what are the lengthening procedures second is electronic electronic pacing of the gut so electronic pacing of the gut you can you can via electrodes you can artificially control the motility same thing that i was describing and the third is the third is knee or you can say synthetic valve synthetic synthetic valve placements so synthetic valves also you can place so what is this synthetic valves doing are they going to do they are going to act as a speed breaker ultimately the concept is either increase the length or increase the duration of the interaction this is what there is in this either you can create new walls or you can just re you can say reverse the bowel loop a short segment loop is reverse and that is how you reduce the pacing or speed or the motility however amongst them the popular thing that we have is the lengthening procedures so let us talk about the lengthening so when you talk about the lengthening procedures lengthening procedures what are the lengthening procedures that we have there are two kinds of lengthening procedures that we have the first is we have bianchi's procedure or this is known as lilt what is lilt let us try to understand lilt this is longitudinal longitudinal incision incision lengthening lengthening and tailoring and tailoring this is what is known as lilt so longitudinal incision lengthening and tailoring this is one the second is second is we have step what do you mean by step this is serial serial transfers serial transfers entroplasty surgery entroplasty procedure so let us try to understand both of them what is lilt what is step one very important thing is let us first talk about lilt when you talk about lilt what are we doing in lilt so try to understand we need a bowel which is at least 4 cm in diameter so the minimum diameter minimum diameter criteria is 4 cm is the minimum diameter and this is a question of super speciality that what is the minimum considerable diameter that we required answer is 4 cm now what you are doing you are going to split this bowel into two so you secure the mesentery and you create a split in the bowel so this is how you create a split in the bowel so when you create a split in the bowel there are two segments which are created let let me show it to you there are two segments which are created so there are two segments now and then you can anastomose one under the another this is what is classical lilt what you have done you have splitted this you have splitted this and then you have just anastomosed it one under the another this is what is a classical classical longitudinal incision lengthening and tailoring procedure this was first time done by bianchi and that is why it is also known as bianchi's procedure bianchi's procedure so if you see in the image that i have shown it to you okay let me go to this image okay yeah you can see the mesentery has been split and once the mesentery has been split you introduce introduce a linear cutting so when you you introduce a linear cutting gi stapler you divide it and then anastomosis now this bowel over the time will increase in diameter again back back it will go to that uh, that normal diameter so don't worry that sir the diameter is uh, reduced where there, whether there will be any stenosis or no so over the time you will see that the bowel becomes normal 
So this is one thing. The second is what is step? So sometimes you don't use this. You use a step procedure. What is the classical concept of step? I have told you that it is serial transverse entroplasty. So here that was a longitudinal entroplasty. Now what is transverse entroplasty? So this is the bowel. Try to understand if this is the bowel. Now what you will do with the GI, endo GI, same linear cutting stapler, you will make some rents here. So you will, you will take out the bowel segments here. Now, when you do this, let me do it for you now. I will reduce, I will remove the, uh, I will remove the bowel segments from this part. So, I will remove the bowel segments now. I will remove the bowel segments now. Okay. So, can you see the bowel which was initially looking a bit straight? The bowel which was initially looking like this. Now, the bowel has been completely converted into a zigzag. So, if you see the zigzag pattern, if you see the zigzag pattern, you have actually increased the length versus this. Initially, this was the transit length. I'm talking about the transit length. But now you have via zigzag, you have converted it into a longer, you can say, unit. So this is just like one step over the another. So literature, by literature also, it's look, it looks like step. Otherwise, the meaning is serial transverse entroplasty surgery. So this was a small crisp discussion on short bowel syndrome or small bowel syndrome. I hope you enjoyed. Do subscribe to my channel. Do comment in the comment section below how you like the video. If you want any other topic to be discussed, it would be my pleasure to discuss it for you. And do share the video with your near and dear ones. Till then, bye-bye.